Uncle Gabe, I am Luke from the 1130 congregation. With regards to Exodus 34 verse 14, if God is a jealous God, isn't jealousy a bad thing? Does that make God bad? Hi Luke, thank you very much for such a wonderful question. As some of you guys may or may not know, I had the privilege to be one of Luke's Planet Faith teachers for the past few years. And very often, he came up with such interesting questions like this one. So, jealousy. Where did Luke get his question from? Well, the Bible talks about God being a jealous God. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, where it says, Do not bow down to them idols, or worship them. I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. But... Don't we usually think that being jealous is a bad thing? Even the Bible says people should not get jealous. For example, in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4, it says, Anger is cruel and wrath is like a flood, but jealousy is even more dangerous. So what is going on here? If the Bible says that jealousy is a bad thing, then how is it that the Bible says that our good God is a jealous God? Well, everyone, here is my answer. There are two things you need to remember. First, there is a wrong and right kind of jealousy. And God's jealousy is always the right kind of jealousy. Second, God's jealousy is good for us. First, let me explain how God's jealousy is always the right kind of jealousy. My dictionary says that the meaning of jealousy is feeling angry or unhappy because someone you like a lot is showing interest in someone else. Jealousy is not good or bad in by itself. Any emotions can be either good or bad depending on the context. Have a look at the following list of emotions. Love, anger, sadness, inspired, please, fear. I assume most people will think that love, inspired, and please to be good emotions, whereas most people will think that anger, sadness, and fear to be bad emotions. However, context is everything. It will be bad if you love to cause harm, if you, if you feel inspired to commit crime, and, and feel pleased to watch others doing acts of evil, but it is good to be angry at injustice, good to feeling sad when you see people in pain, and good to feel fearful at certain dangerous activities. So being jealous is kind of like that. There is a wrong kind of jealousy and a right kind of jealousy, depending on the context. It is wrong if you are jealous in an envious way, wanting to have another person's partner, wanting to have another person's stuff. These are the wrong kind of jealousies that Proverbs chapter 27 verse 4 is warning us about. So, where do we see right kind of jealousies in our lives? An example of a right kind of jealousy is seen in a good marriage. When one is married to someone and they are both committed to each other and love one another, one will protect that relationship. You know, as humans, we are able to have both the wrong and right kind of jealousy. But God's jealousy is always the right kind of jealousy. God's jealousy for his people is like a husband's loving jealousy towards his wife. Now, this brings me to the second point to Luke's question. God's jealousy is good for us. As you recall in Exodus, God rescues the Israelites from Egypt and brings them to Mount Sinai. There, God enters into a relationship agreement with the Israelites called the Covenant. In the Bible, a covenant is a special promise that God makes towards His people. Therefore, a covenant is like a marriage between a husband and a wife, but much bigger. As you know, many Israelites were unable to be faithful to God. Again and again, many Israel will turn away from God and turn to false idols instead. Even though God had every right to abandon His people, God goes on to save His chosen people whom He loves. God's jealousy is good for us 
because it shows that he loves us. Do you want to know how much he loves his people like you and me? God loves his people so much that he sends his only son Jesus who goes on to live a perfectly sinless life that none of us could live. Then he went on to die on a Roman cross with all our sins placed on him. And he rose from the dead and triumphed over sin and death. So look, as Christians, we have a God who loves us so much that he will guard that relationship jealously. In Romans, the Apostle Paul says, I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any power can separate us. Not even the highest place and the lowest or anything in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Isn't it great that our God is a God that loves us so much that he will jealously protect us? Not because we deserve it, not because we are nice, but because in his grace and mercy, God loved us first. So let's give glory and praise to our jealous, most loving God.